Can I just drop the periphery 80, 90% of my desires and trust in the guidance of my soul and just revel in the pure desire of the quality of love, forgiveness, truth, courage that I wish to exhibit and that I wish to learn more of and that I wish to share with others. Because if you can tr trust in the energy state of your true calling in the face of any catalyst, it will resolve itself. Question by Joy. What is the difference between catalyst pointing us in a different direction? Catalyst can be suffering or challenge or opposition. So what's the difference between catalyst pointing us in a different direction and a day two challenge showing us our beliefs which are to be transformed? So let's say you have an intention, which you all have at any given point, might not be always conscious, but you have a desire right now for your life. It's present. There's a powerful energy behind that. And sometimes there will be a manifestation that seems to oppose that or cause some doubt. That's essentially a day two challenge, even to the unconscious desires that you didn't even realize you had. You have a lot of day one intentions that you're not so conscious of. But you will know when day two arrives that you don't like what you see. So, and Abraham Hicks often says, you know, if you know what you don't want, then you know what you do want. So you pivot, you use it as contrast. So maybe you're not even aware of where you're heading, where you're going, what you're intending, what you're calling forth into your life, but you will know that you don't like what you don't like. And this can be a day two challenge that actually reveals that you had a day one insight or intention that you weren't that conscious of. It was kind of murmuring in the background. So this is a bit of a side note, but this is how you can use unpleasant situations. You can ask yourself, okay, this seems like I'm receiving some form of opposition, some denial of my desire, some denial of what I am, what I know I truly want to be and express and share and teach and learn. Why is this opposition here? Well, first of all, are you aware of what it is in response to? What is the desire that this is not a match to? this obstacle in your life, for instance, right? So if it's no money, to use a simple example, then you realize, oh, my desire is to be able to move freely, to be able to purchase freely, to be able to gift freely, to be able to travel from location to location freely. I didn't even know I had that desire as much as I know it now because I have no money and I was about to plan a trip to Montana. And now I'm very aware of how I would love to have the freedom to move around how that would be an expression of my passion, how that would help me learn and flow. So you can use the negative or contrasting or opposite, oppositional experiences in your life that seem like obstacles, first of all, before anything else, to get clear on what you do truly want, what's truly part of your calling, what's a part of your highest desire as a soul, not just as a personality with all its little wants and disturbances, no, as a soul, Remember, what do you truly want? What's the kind of freedom, the kind of flow, the kind of quality that you truly desire to manifest for yourself and others? Now, once you're clear on this, be confident in that, whether it's a day two challenge, the obstacle in your life, the catalyst, or whether it's trying to point you in a different direction, either way, first, establish yourself in the purity, in the truth, in the conviction, of the quality, the essence of what you desire. Not the specifics. This is where you get messed up. This is where your manifestational journey gets all knotted up. You get your panties in a twist. And this is when there will be catalysts trying to point us, nudge us in a different direction, but we often don't hear it that way because we're too insistent on the specifics. So my friends, you all have desires, whether you want to acknowledge them or not, whether you wish to amplify them or not, whether you're afraid of them or not, whether you believe you deserve them or not, all of that is quite irrelevant. You have a calling, you have a desire, and you have desires that come from that. 
and you're going to experience challenge, opposition, doubts in your environment, whether by others or yourself, trying to make you doubt. You're going to manifest things that seem to oppos be opposite of what you want. So what are you going to do with that? First of all, like I said, connect to what you truly want. Because if you're not clear on this, you can't do anything. You can't navigate the challenge very well at all. And then it doesn't matter what, what its nature is. So first, know what you do want. And I don't mean this selfishly per se. Although feel free to feel selfish also, like include that part, just like know what you want, whatever it might be, don't judge it. But ultimately, okay, we want to purify our desires. And this is part of why life sometimes redirects us a little bit, and we don't listen in that way, we don't interpret it correctly. But it's to purify our desires. Like, why are you really here? If you're already dead, then what, you, what would you want? If you would be dead in three days, how many of your current needs and wants would disappear completely to leave you alone forever, to leave you free and unburdened? And aren't you much happier without the things that you, without the wanting of the things that you want? Aren't you much happier without the wants even than having what you want? That's liberation. It's not needing all these wants. Okay, so life will gradually point you in the direction of purifying your desires. And it does this usually in the form of seeming opposition or challenge. So it's usually a bit of both. When there's a catalyst in your life, it points you in a pure direction, mainly, who am I really? Why am I here? What's truly important? And can I be attuned to that frequency of my calling, the energy state, the feeling of it, the reality of it, regardless of circumstances? And can I let go and trust in the specifics that they will take care of themselves? Because I do not know exactly what is my highest reality. I might have a picture of it, but that's a limited picture. That limited picture might excite me, but it might not be my highest excitement. I may not know my highest reality. I may not know what my highest expression should look like. I don't know exactly who I'm meant to be with, who I'm meant to meet and co-create with, who is meant to teach me what and who am I to teach what. I don't know exactly what I'm going to encounter tomorrow. So why hold on rigidly to an image? Because then we're stubborn and insistent and we fail to learn the qualities. You know, it's quality over specificity. It's energy state over specific manifestational object. You got to prioritize the energy state that you're attuned to, that you're coming from, that you're believing in. And regardless of what the nature of the catalyst in your life might be, it's always good to reaffirm this, to go clearer and cleaner and purer into your prioritization. Why am I truly here? And can I drop all the trinkets and bells and whistle desires that only get me in trouble anyway and that make me insistent and stubborn and frustrated and dissatisfied? Can I just drop the periphery 80, 90% of my desires and trust in the guidance of my soul and just revel in the pure desire of the quality of love, forgiveness, truth, courage that I wish to exhibit and that I wish to learn more of and that I wish to share with others? Because if you can tr trust in the energy state of your true calling in the face of any catalyst, it will resolve itself. Either because you realize, hey, oh, it is nudging me slightly left or right, or even it's nudging me completely in the opposite direction of what my mind had symbolized or pictured this singing would look like. Suddenly I realize I'm meant to be a dancer. I thought I was meant to sing, but actually now I'm discovered for my dancing. I never realized that. And that's even more enjoyable. And that feels even truer to my expression than singing. But had I been insistent upon, no, now I need to be a singer because I decided that on my day one. And now it's a day two challenge and I got to be a singer. So I got to believe in it and make sure that happens. By the way, this insistence is a sign of non-faith. It's not a sign of belief or faith, right? If we truly have faith, if we truly believe in that energy state, we are already shifted. We're already that singer. Then life can do whatever it wants. It can it can try to tempt us into doubt, whatever, however it wants to do that. We feel convinced. Then life's challenges are just like tiny little toddlers screaming for attention and you don't care. Like it doesn't move you, you know it's nonsense. And then it will manifest in the highest way for you because you're convinced in the proper energy state. 
and then you will enter day three, regardless of whether it was a day two challenge or a redirection. Because if you're open and convinced like this of your true intent, then you will be able to interpret the nudge because you're not insistent upon the picture. That's what I mean. Energy state over specificity. It doesn't have to happen the way that you're picturing it. Be open. Let there be magic and mystery and surprise because isn't that the fun part of being in this stupid little veil of this third density incarnation where you forget everything that you've ever been? Like the only positive of that is that you get to learn unique lessons and you get to experience the power of surprise. Magic, mystery, adventure, the unknown. So don't miss out on the only positive quality of your incarnation by fearing the unknown, okay? Everything else is shit compared to non-incarnation, okay? It's painful, it's gross, it's tedious. It takes a lot of time between your intentions and your manifestations. Compared to the spirit level of consciousness, there is nothing good about this. However, exclusive to maybe these two aspects, there's something very powerful and potent and useful about this, which is A, it can greatly accelerate your self-realization, your awakening process, your prioritization of what's important, precisely because it's such a dense place. It seems to be such a stuck place sometimes. Less and less so, we're progressing as a species, but there is still that element of slowness. There is still that element of it, sort of an imprisonment of the physicality of it being in carne, being in meat, in a meat suit. That's not a lot of fun compared to non-dual, non-linear, parallel reality shifting free consciousness with infinite energy beams. You know, it's not the funnest place. However, it's very rich in its opportunity for purification, getting closer to your divine essence, that God spark, because you have so much incentive here to focus on that, precisely because it's a limited place on purpose, by design. And the, the other sort of fun bonus of it, aside, you know, the wine and chocolate for the ladies, is the mystery. It's the element of not knowing. So if you are afraid of the only positive, one of the only positive elements of being in a state of incarnation, in flesh and blood, then you're kind of missing on, you know, this beautiful opportunity. So embrace the mystery, drop your specifics, you'll be the freer for it, you'll feel better for it, you'll be more loving, more generous, more forgiving, automatically you'll be less concerned for yourself, you'll be able to interpret your guidance much clearer, you'll be able to act with greater passion and precision, and your true calling can shine forth because you're not insisting upon a particular image. And then you don't need as many redirections. And then you don't need as many day two challenges because you're in flow with life. You're listening, you're paying attention. Thank you, Joy. That was a joy.